In my last reptile room tour, I spoke about how I wasn't happy with my line day gecko's enclosure because, simply put, it is just too small for them. And this has become even more apparent now that the geckos have started breeding and there's tiny little babies hopping about all over the place. So with this in mind, over the next couple of videos, what I'm going to be doing is detailing how I am going to be setting up a 90 by 45 by 90 centimetre glass vivarium, which is going to be a new home for the line day geckos, as well as some other inhabitants further on down the line. I bought the enclosure from a business called Custom Aquaria based here in England. The reason that I wanted an enclosure like this rather than one of the typical commercial glass of area is that the commercial ones usually have swinging doors and so when you open those doors there is necessarily a space around the hinge area where particularly fast geckos might suddenly jump out of and I don't really fancy chasing the line day geckos around the living room. Sliding doors of course don't have this problem because the part of the enclosure that you open is the same as the part that you were going to be putting your hands in, so geckos aren't going to tend to come flying out of that. Anyway, not dragging this intro out any longer than I have to, let me hand back to my former self so that we can get cracking with the background for this enclosure. So having been away at university for eight weeks, you will be very glad to know that I still have my priorities in all the correct order, because uh, on the way back from Cambridge yesterday, we picked up a brand new vivarium. Now you'll see that this enclosure is placed on its side, so this is going to be the bottom and that over there is going to be the top, you can sort of see the mesh there. Um, and the reason that it's on its side like this is because I'm going to be making um, a sort of side ground, a background on the side if you like. Um, and obviously that is a lot easier with the vivarium place like this. So that is going to be this morning's job and I'm going to show you how I do that right now. Having first given the glass a good clean to remove any dust and particles, I started trying different bits of cork bark to see what would make an appealing and functional background. We'll stick this cork bark directly to the glass in a moment using silicone, and I suppose now is a good time to point out that there will be a link in the video description which you can follow to view all of the products used in this build. I eventually settled on having a large piece of cork with a branch sticking out of the side as the centrepiece for this bit of the background. Not only does this look interesting, but it's also functional in that the geckos will come to use it as a basking site, which leads me on to mentioning that when you are decorating Vivaria, always keep in mind that the best layouts are the ones which the animals can most readily interact with. Happy with the layout, I set about applying a generous amount of aquarium safe silicone to the cork bark and pressing it in place. Day two. So somewhat amazingly, I have actually managed to have the patience to wait a whole 48 hours for the silicone on this to cure, which means that this is all um, pretty well rock solid now. So what I'm going to do is uh, take this vivarium down with a, an extra pair of hands to help me, uh, stick it on an owl carpet, and then uh, when it's lied on its back on the ground, I'll um, set about making the background, which is actually the background rather than the side ground. So let's get on with it. Now all I'm going to do is repeat the same procedure with the background as adjusted for the side ground. Here 
Here what I'm doing is carving down the piece of cork bark using a knife to generate some nice flat surfaces to which I can apply silicone, ensuring that it'll grip it nice and tightly and that it won't fall off the glass later on. To make sure that the cork bark is anchored firmly to the glass, you want to be using plenty of silicone. I ended up using 4 tubes in this build alone. So it's been a good couple of days now since we put all the last bits of silicone in and cork in this enclosure, which means that now it should all be dry and we can move this vivarium up into place and get cracking with the rest of the build. I installed part of the lighting rig on the enclosure at this point just so that I could see what I was doing, but a full video on the full lighting rig is being worked on and will be out shortly. You will see that there are gaps between the pieces of cork bark at this point that allow you to see right through the back of the enclosure to the wall behind, which really does not look that good in my opinion. So now what we're going to do is fill in these cracks. To do this, I use sphagnum moss which I buy as dehydrated bricks and then add water to, making them expand. Believe it or not, the moss will actually come back to life if given enough time, light and water, so eventually it will grow to cover the cork bark which looks quite nice. You really do want to pack the moss in tight here, or else it's liable to falling out. I'm sure you will agree that, with the moss pressed into place, the background is looking one heck of a lot better than it did before. And with that, we finished the background. So uh, I think that looks pretty decent and I hope that you do too. Um, if you have found this video useful and you would like to copy this idea for making a background in your own glass with area, then go straight ahead, or if you don't want to copy this idea but it's given you some of your own ideas, then feel free to act on those as well. 
Anyway, now what I'm going to do is crack on with making the false bottom for this enclosure. Then once I've done that, I'm going to start making the pool area and putting the substrate in, getting the plants in, and then I'll do the lighting. But all of that is going to come in different videos. So for now, I've been JTB Reptiles teaching you how to follow nature's example. And if you want to see the rest of this enclosure build, then subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Thank you.